Welcome to Friendship Baptist Church, and we are so glad that you have tuned in with us. Here it is, Thanksgiving week, 2021, and as I've been traveling around this week listening and talking to people, and an interesting thought hit my mind. The Bible says that we are to give thanks always. And as I have talked to people this week, the question has come to my mind, how can I give thanks always when things are not always things I need to be thankful for? For example, what if you have Uncle so-and-so at your house for Thanksgiving and he blows his nose at the kitchen table? What if you have Aunt so-and-so who wants to pinch your cheeks or give you a big wet sloppy kiss? What if you have uncle so-and-so or cousin so-and-so that doesn't hear well and you have to talk real loud? I heard people say this week that I, I dread getting together with my family because I don't like some of them. And as I was thinking about that, God took me to Psalm 19. And so I want to read a few verses at the very beginning of the psalm. And then I want to switch, switch to the last part of the psalm and see how it applies to us. This psalm was written by King David and it doesn't tell us what was going on in his life when he wrote this psalm but I I can just picture him out maybe uh, tending the sheep I can picture him maybe sitting in his castle I'm not sure where he was he didn't tell us where he was when he wrote this but I can believe that he was like us he had things in his life that he didn't like he had problems in his life that crept up and stole his joy he had things happen in his life that he couldn't control. And so how did he always give thanks? And so we're going to look at that. Psalms 19 and 1 says this. Now this is David, and he's talking really probably to himself. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak, and night after night they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. And in fact, if you want to turn over to Romans 2, Apostle Paul clearly talks about us seeing the invisible God that we can look around and we can see him. So David is telling us that in the Old Testament. Paul told us that in the New. Then what he says this, he says, Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun, and it bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heaven and follows its course to the other end, and nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. And I'm going to stop right there. I want to encourage you to read the rest of the psalm. But now I want to go to verses 12. And here's what he said. How can I know all the sins that are lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sin. Don't let sin control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. And you're thinking, well, preacher, what in the world has that got to do with Thanksgiving? Well, I can tell you exactly what it has to do. If we keep our eyes on the Word of God, and if we realize how great God is by creating everything that He's created, David is sitting here and he's saying, I see the sun rise, and I see the sun set, and God put it in its path. I see the wonders of God, and the book of Nahum tells us that God says that the clouds are His footstool, and that the whirlwind controls Him. If we see how great God is and then we compare ourselves to Him, then you know what? All these little problems that we have in life cannot compare to the love of God. And so I need to look at my faults before I complain about the guy who blows his nose or the guy who can't hear good or the aunt who wants to kiss me too much or the problems that I have at the Thanksgiving table. I need to look at my faults. And when I look at my faults compared to God, then your faults are not near as noticeable. 
A lot of people think that God will take a sponge and wipe around inside us and clean us and so we don't have to worry about our hidden fault, but God calls them strongholds. And we have these strongholds in our lives where it's so easy for us to look at other people and complain, and yet we don't look at ourselves. See, God doesn't just clean us up once he saves us. He lets us go through a process called sanctification and in that sanctification, he allows us to grow. And we don't, we don't grow to be six foot from a baby overnight. It is a process. And God sometimes, he wants to deal with our hidden faults. And he'll send somebody to maybe irritate us or maybe to point out our faults to us. And I'm going to tell you, it is so easy for us to look at other people and not look at ourselves. I, it, it's so easy for me to see your faults or you to see my faults and not see our own. But David here realized that God is wonderful, that God is great, that God is omnipotent, that God loves him. And so God will put these people in our past sometimes to confront us with our sin. In fact, David later on in his life had that happen to him. When David broke every commandment there was, he lied, he, he stole, he murdered, he committed adultery, he, he lusted, he did every commandment that he was not supposed to do. He broke every one of them. And God sent a man named uh, Nathan to him and, and confronted him with his sin. And when he confronted, David then repented. So sometimes God will send these people in our lives to confront us, to maybe point out our faults. And the Bible says this, that a wise man learns from a wiser man. So when God sends somebody into our life to talk to us about our faults, we need to thank God for that instead of getting mad. We need to realize that the people that God has put in our lives, our families, none of them are perfect, including us. So yes, I can go to Thanksgiving with thankfulness in my heart and I can love my family members even though they are not perfect. And I, I was just thinking today as I was reading this and God was, was dealing with me on this, the people that I don't want to be around are probably the ones that I need to be around so I can demonstrate the love of God to them. Once again, God is getting me out of my comfort zone. And, and God wants us to confess our sins. God knows that I can never see my own sins. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit to convict us. We need to look at our own heart and ask God like David did here. David said, show me my hidden sins. When was the last time you asked God that? And I want to challenge you before Thanksgiving, before you get to that meal, whether it be at lunch or whether it be at dinner or whether it be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever you have it, ask God to let you be a light in a dark world. Let God flow through you that you can demonstrate the love that he has for you to them through yourself. See, we need to realize that David here says, God, show me my sins. And then he says, don't let them control me. You know what that means? God, take away that anger from me when I go to be with these people. Take away the frustration that I have. The Bible clearly says that we are to love others as we love ourselves. And we don't get mad at ourselves. We don't get frustrated with ourselves. So we need to say, God, don't let these sins control me. Because here's what happens. When I look at others and I look at their faults and I look at the things that they do that doesn't match up to what I think, you know what I'm really saying is I'm right and you're wrong. I'm closer to God than you are. Listen, the people that we come in contact with during the Thanksgiving holidays needs to know that God loves them and that he is in control. And especially in 2021 with all the fear we have going on right now. We need to share the love of God just like David is. David is praying and praising at the same time. He is saying, God, help me. I can do nothing without you. Just like Paul said in Philippians, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. The reverse of that is what David is saying here. I can't do anything without you. 
So we have the Old Testament, David, and we have the New Testament, Paul, and they are telling us the same thing. Quit judging others and let the love of Christ flow through you because when you are judging others, you are letting Satan steal your joy and you are putting yourself in the position of a judge where you were never meant to be. Well, as I look back on a lot of Thanksgivings in my life, yes, there have been people that I didn't want to be around. But now that I've got gray hair on my head, I wish I could go back and spend time with them again. I wish I could go back and learn from them because you know what? As I look back on my life, there were a lot of godly people that I had for family that I did not take advantage of their knowledge and their love for God because I was too ready to compare themselves to what I thought they ought to be. So ask yourself this week, God, show me my faults. Show me where I need to confess to you. And I will assure you, if you will do that, you will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Someone was just up here earlier reading that passage. And God has shown me today that how can I be thankful in all things? By realizing how much he loves me. By realizing how much he forgave me. By realizing that I'm not perfect and I am not the role model. That's how I can be thankful. Because then I can come to God and I can say, God, thank you for saving a wicked person like me. And then when I do that, I will have compassion, not only on the family, but also on the whole world. So I want to challenge you this week. Look at yourself first before you start looking at others. Look at yourself and compare yourself to God. Don't compare others to you, but compare yourself to God. And I promise you, if you'll do that, you will have a fresh awakening of how much God loves you. I'd like to invite you to our little church by the road. We're just a simple church that loves the Lord. We believe what the Bible says, and that's what we preach. We believe that Jesus Christ was born a virgin. We believe that he lived a sinless life. We believe that he was crucified. And on the third day, he arose. We believe that he paid the price for all sins and that he loves you. We believe that the Holy Spirit will convict you and call you to repentance. But we also believe that unless you say yes to the Holy Spirit, that you cannot be saved. We would like to share the love of Christ with you. We do it online and we do it in person. But let me tell you, there's something about coming to our little church by the road. When you walk through those doors, you feel the love of Christ. You feel the love for each other. And you see a people who are wanting desperately to lift up the name of Jesus and to take as many people with us to heaven as we can. We're tired of Satan stealing our children. We're tired of Satan attacking our families. And we're tired of the world being afraid of tomorrow because jesus christ said this he said i've overcome the world he's overcome death hell and the grave and we want to share that good news with you so please reach out to the little church by the road we're not perfect we don't claim to be but we serve a perfect savior a savior who is waiting right now with outstretched arms to pick you up clean you up and put your feet on the right path. You're also willing to come to the little church by the road, I promise you this, once Jesus does that, then we will pray for you, we will support you, and we will encourage you. So as you head into Thanksgiving, if you don't have a church to attend, please come see the little church by the road. Our dress code is simple. Just be covered up and be modest, and we'd love to see you. Thank you for listening to the Little Church by the Road and pray for us, please. Thank you very much.